Hello friends, welcome again to Grace Baptist Church, our Sunday afternoon service, and this being October the 31st, and we appreciate you tuning in today. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday and was able to get out and go to the house of the Lord today, and I appreciate you tuning in this evening. We're going to pick up our reading in Matthew chapter number 15. If you have your Bible, be turning to verse number 10 there. What can really defile a person? What can really defile a person? Jesus talks about defilement. And uh, so many times people say, well, if you eat this, you're defiled. <laughs> in the Old Testament, that was true. But in the New Testament, uh, the Lord really knocked all the restrictions off. And you don't have to worry so much about it. In the New Testament, we're under the grace of God, not the law. The law was a schoolmaster shows us that we broke the law with God and it brings us to Christ and we can be saved through Jesus Christ. But if you have your Bible there in Matthew chapter number 15, verse number 10, it says he called the multitude and said unto them, hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. So let's go to the Lord in prayer right before our message. Father, we come today and ask you blessings upon our time together. As we study this passage, teach us what will help us to be more like Jesus. That's our earnest prayer, that we would be more like him. And Father, we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we have the Lord here, and there's a multitude standing by with him at Gennesaret right there by the Sea of Galilee. And he just had an encounter with the scribes and the Pharisees. They were always nipping at his heels like a bunch of little dogs and trying to trap Jesus. And they never could do it. And Jesus uh, had healed many sick people and diseased people. But now they're going to be taught a principle from Jesus about what true defilement or pollution really is. We hear a lot about pollution today, air pollution, land pollution, you know, trash everywhere, something going into the water system. And it pollutes the water, it pollutes the land. Well, the Bible talks about polluting the heart. What is it that can pollute the heart? And so, really, he says here and understand in verse number 10. Basically, he's saying, sit up and listen. I'm going to teach you a very important truth here. I'm going to teach you something that will help you. Now notice again in verse 11. Here's the truth. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man. That which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Now he's saying that there's not any food or any drink that goes into a person that really brings defilement, but it's that which comes out of the man that brings defilement in his life. It's the heart. This would have been transformational to the Jewish world. Why is that? Because they had always followed the Old Testament dietary laws. Couldn't eat pork. Couldn't eat fish without scales, a catfish. You couldn't eat catfish. Uh, couldn't eat shrimp. And so, so many things they had on their list that you could not eat. And God did away with all of that. In the sheep vision, God gave Simon Peter in the book of Acts. But these Jews, they were used to keeping these laws. Now, Jesus, in essence, pretty much knocks the whole argument right out of the water. And he says, hey, there's nothing that you can eat or drink that's going to defile you. Could you imagine what was going through their minds as they thought of all the food that now they were permitted to eat? <laughs> they could eat pork, ham, bacon, sausage tenderloins, catfish, shrimp, all these foods that were forbidden them in the Old Testament kosher law. Now the word for defile, defileth, if you'll notice, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out defileth the man. What does that word mean, defileth? It means to make common. It means to declare unclean to profane, to render unhallowed or unholy. 
for something to be unclean has the meaning of pollution. So the Old Testament laws, what they ate, their dietary laws, and their rules and regulations, they were given by God to the nation of Israel to help them to understand that these outward expressions of cleanliness and uncleanliness, they were to show them that they were to be clean on the inside of the heart, which was much more important than the outside. They were pictures showing cleanliness and pollution when he told them, well, you can't eat pork, you can't eat tenderloin, you can't eat catfish. Why? Because it is not considered a clean food. And now he is telling them, keep your heart right. That's what really defiles the person, what comes out of the heart. So being right with God has nothing to do with whether or not we ate a sausage biscuit for breakfast or not. Now, the Old Testament is a little different. They couldn't eat sausage. We can. Jesus said, what comes out of a man is that which truly defiles the man. So he's referring to our thoughts, our intents, what we intend to do. It's not enough just to look good on the outside, he says. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. And he wants us to keep our heart pure and clean. He's concerned with what goes on on the inside. So Christianity is the only movement that can change the heart of a person. There's nobody else who can change the heart except for Christ. Now you can go into all the other false religions or the cults of our day. They concentrate on outward appearance. You know, dress in a white shirt and wear the tie all the time. You know, and, and there's nothing wrong with looking nice. I'm not saying that you should go around looking sloppy. <laughs> I think we ought to go around looking the best we can with what we got to work with. But Jesus is saying it's not the outward appearance that really counts with God. It's what's in a person's heart. Because what's in a person's heart is eventually going to show up in their life. It's going to come out in their words and in their actions. If the heart is right with God, then the outside will follow and it'll show evidence of a clean heart. But a person can have a wicked heart. They can try to deceive other people by looking good on the outside, but on the inside, they're wicked. That's what the scribes and the Pharisees and those hypocrites were doing. They look good on the outside, but on the inside, they were dirty. Let's listen to what Proverbs says here. Proverbs 4, 23. You want to write it in your Bible. Proverbs 4, verse number 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now in that passage, in the book of Proverbs, Solomon is warning us, just like Jesus does in this passage, that we better make sure we keep the heart clean. Keep the heart pure. Because what's on the inside is going to show up in our words and our actions. If we're clean in our hearts, our thinking's going to be proper. Our deeds and our words are going to be clean. But if we are thinking bad thoughts on the inside, it's not going to be long until they're going to be portrayed on the outside. That's why we have to guard our thoughts. That's why we have to be very careful what we think about. Paul said over there in the book of Philippians, chapter number four, think on good things, not bad things. Think on good things. Don't dwell on the things of the world and the lust of the flesh and all the things that are bidding for your attention. Keep your focus on the Lord Jesus. Now, that's why we guard the thoughts and we don't dwell or ruminate on wicked negative thoughts. They discourage us. They defile us. When we're thinking wicked thoughts, we know that God's not pleased. And therefore, we can't really enjoy that kind of a lifestyle. It's going to pull us down. So we have to keep that heart clean and pure. Confess our sins to the Lord if we're thinking bad thoughts. And he'll forgive us. Now, you may be wondering, how can I keep my heart pure and clean? 
And I would say, first of all, be very careful what you watch on TV. That has a whole lot to do with it. Be careful what you listen to on the radio. Be careful to the conversations you listen to. Sometimes people will get you in trouble by what they say, and someone will think you're a part of it. Somebody has wisely said, garbage in, garbage out. And so if somebody's trying to poison your mind with bad words and gossip, critical remarks about another individual, the best practice is to try to change the subject or just get away from that person. Don't let them pollute your mind. Don't let them use your mind as a trash can to throw trash in. That's going to defile your heart. And it eventually is going to show up in your life. So Jesus is telling the Jews something that may be one of the most shocking statements that they had ever heard. And that is salvation is a matter of the heart. It's not the outside tradition and rules that they were keeping. Food does not defile a man, but the heart can defile a man. Listen to James 3, verse number 6. James 3, verse number 6 says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, but it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Just one person can destroy another person's reputation and literally burn them to the ground by saying wicked things about them, by lying about them, spreading vicious gossip about another person. Now that's defiling the person who is spreading the gossip. Their wickedness is coming out in their words. They're hurting someone else in the process. The great principle that Jesus is teaching is that moral defilement, moral defilement is spiritual. Remember that. It's not physical. If you're defiled morally, it's spiritual. There's a spiritual problem there. And then, so we see number one, the principle of defilement. And then we see number two, the exposure of defilement. Then came his disciples. And said unto him, Knowest thou the Pharisees? They were offended after they heard this saying. (laughs) I don't think Jesus worried too much about them. They might have got a little mad. Their feathers might have got a little ruffled. But I don't believe it bothered Jesus too much because he's really trying to help them. He's trying to show them, quit looking so good on the outside, but keeping a rotten inside. One time Jesus said this, you are a bunch of whited sepulchers or tombs. On the outside, they would wash those tombs every year, keep them good and clean. But on the inside, there were still dead men's bones there. And that's what he said about the scribes and the Pharisees. So the disciples, they questioned Jesus about the response of the Pharisees when Jesus put them in their place. Jesus said the scribes and the Pharisees had put their tradition above the word of God and that they were hypocrites for doing that. You don't put your own man-made traditions or rules and regulations above the law of God. So many times people will say, well, you know, this, if you do this, this, and this, you're going to be a good Christian. Where's that in the Bible? Well, I don't think it's in the Bible, but it's kind of our code of conduct and it might be good things to do but it doesn't mean that you're going to be a great christian because a christian has more to do with our heart than what we do or or we don't do see a christian has to believe on the lord jesus christ with all thine heart and we can be saved and that's what the bible teaches about exposing defilement Now, notice what Jesus responds to the disciples. They ask him, Lord, do you realize you just offended these high elite religious leaders? They're upset with you, Lord. Eventually, they would put him on a cross. But look at verse 13 here, if you will. And remember, we're in Matthew 15, and we're in verse 13. But he answered and said, every plant, 
which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Now the word for plant here in the Greek language carries the idea of system. Every system, basically, that God has not started is going to pass away. It'll never, it'll never last. Truth will always prevail. And the truth is none other than Jesus Christ. See, man comes up with all these man-made religions and these cults. And they've got a new revelation. Friends, if it's new, it's not true. And if it's true, it's not new. It's been around for a thousand years. So anyway, some of it's been around longer than that, close to two or three thousand years, the Old Testament truth. So the word means system. It's not too broad to interpret Jesus as basically saying that every religious system which my heavenly Father hath not planted is going to be rooted up and destroyed. Why? Because it's, it's, it's falsehood. Jesus said the heavenly Father would expose the false believer. And the tares, as we have looked at the wheat in the tear parable, God roots up the false plants. Sometimes we want to root up the tares ourselves, but God said, no, let them grow to the end of the age and I'll root them up and I'll cast them into a furnace of fire because we don't really know who's saved and who's not saved. It's not our job to judge people's salvation. That's between them and God. It's our job just to proclaim the word of God, not our opinions. Not what I think, it really counts, it's what God knows and has said in his Bible that really counts. So he says here that he knows who's real and he knows who's not real. <laughs> Every plant that God didn't plant will be rooted up. Now look with me at Matthew 15, verse number 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Can you believe that? If the blind leads the blind, they don't know where they're going. And they're not anchored on the precious truth of the gospel, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. These man-made religions and these man-made rules and regulations. That's kind of a funny statement he makes about these Pharisees. Have you ever fallen into a ditch and you couldn't get out? I fell off of a ladder. I couldn't get up. I was 30 feet in the air. Broke my leg right on the tibia. I laid there for about two hours before they finally found me. I read about a family that had a dog named Patty. They were very fond of the dog, especially their young son, Peter. Unfortunately, their dog was hit by a car and killed, and Peter was at school, and his mother was trying to soften the blow. And so she went to meet him as tactfully as she could, and she broke the news that Patty had died. To her surprise, Peter took it pretty well. He was pretty calm. He didn't say a whole lot. Later in the day, she was busy in the house, and he came sobbing in the room, Patty is dead. Patty is dead. And the mother said, well, I know that, but I've already told you and you didn't pay me any attention. And he said, oh, I thought you said daddy. <laughs> daddy instead of Patty. Well, there's no miscommunication with what Jesus is saying here. He is saying what he meant and he means what he said. He told the disciples to leave the Pharisees alone because the Pharisees were blind to God's truth. And anyone who listened to their teaching risked spiritual blindness as well. They're both going to end up in the ditch, which is symbolic of destruction. Not all religious leaders clearly see God's truth, friends. Check them out with the word of God. Make sure they teach and preach God's word before you follow. Make sure those you listen to have good spiritual eyesight that they can learn and teach and follow the principles of scripture. And so we see here, it's a pretty severe form of God's wrath. He will burn it up. He will take care of the false 
religious systems of the world. We read this way back in the book of Romans. It talks a little bit about it. Romans 1, 18 to 32. It signifies that God abandons and gives over to a reprobate mind those who will not listen to the Lord. They're given over to a dirty, unfit mind. Listen to the Romans 1, 28. Romans 1, 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which were not convenient. Jesus said, leave the scribes and the Pharisees alone. They're blind, spiritually speaking, and they're going to lead other believers in the ditch with them if they follow them. Could you imagine this scene of blind man leading other blind people off of a cliff to destruction? That's why I always say, check them out by the word of God. It will expose who is true, and it will also expose who is not true. When the light of the word of God comes on a situation, the creatures of darkness have to scatter. Have you ever turned the light on in a dark place and see the bugs and the night critters just scatter and flee? Jesus is the true light. And friends, we're to carry him out into a dark world. And he is the light of the world. Well, we'll stop there and pick up the rest of it next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Always remember defilement or pollution starts on the inside. It's not something a person eats or drinks the holy days and all the rest of that, as they did in the Old Testament. They wouldn't even touch a catfish. I love fried catfish. They wouldn't even eat shrimp, and I love good seafood, shrimp especially. But now, thank God, we can, we can eat it because God is saying it's not the food, it's the heart that really counts. Well, let's have a prayer and we'll be finished. Father, thank you again for the time we've had to just share another portion of this blessed book called the Bible. Help us, Lord, to always seek your will for our lives. Help us to put you first and center our thoughts upon you and your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you again, friends, for tuning in. Until next time, may the Lord richly bless you.